Welcome, everyone, to Mystery, a podcast about myths and history. I am one of your hosts, Brian, with my permanent guest, Cami. Hey, what up, Cami? Welcome back. Hey, Halloween Brian. Part Thank two. You. Yes. Yeah, Sherlock Holmes was a lot of fun last week. We're following up with another literary character here. In Mystery, we pick myths and legends. Sometimes we talk about Victorian era literature as well, which is what's happening a lot this month. And it, today, Frankenstein is is the the one which you may not know was a eighteen eighteen novel written by uh, Mary Shelley, uh, a very influential writer of the time. I found out. So, Cammy's going to give us a story, uh, and then I'll kind of talk about. Uh, I mean, this is really talking about Mary Shelley uh, mainly, but there's some cool stuff about. I mean, she she had an incredible life, and then of course Frankenstein's effect. Uh, on breakfast cereal has been incredible and we'll discuss that in length in a few minutes so cammy why don't you take it away with your story absolutely so i used project gutenberg um and i actually found the book on there so frankenstein or the modern prometheus mary wollstonecraft godwin shelley in my life i've only had two obsessions one a girl the other life not just life, but the quality of it. I've seen men struck down with disease and hardship that caused their bodies to decay until there was nothing left. Since I was a boy, my parents, especially my mother, had a kinship with the destitute of Italy and the rest of the continent. We would travel long hours to help the sick and needy, and this is what laid the seeds of my obsession. I studied the works of scientists from a thousand years ago, Cornelius Agrippa opening the world for me. My boyhood spent hoping for the secrets of the philosopher's stone or the elixir of life. It was a lightning bolt, bright and blistering, that brought me to my conclusion. It splintered a tall oak behind my family vacation home when I was 15, and that moment burned itself into my very senses, just as it had scorched the earth. So I began to gather the pieces of my plan, but I did not know it yet. When I entered later study, I was introduced to more modern works, the science of now. But though it seemed far-fetched from my new studies, I still held that the secret of eternal life existed if only man were bold enough to look for it. And that I did, everywhere. My new teachers offered their perspective on the beauty of natural science and training on all instruments I would ever need in my work, but they stopped short of giving me what I so desired. They did not believe it existed. And so I outgrew my studies there. But soon, while I was on my own to ponder, I found the secret I so wanted. I took to gathering the needed supplies from churchyards, skin, bone, muscle, fat, all the parts that make a man. It took most of the summer to procure these parts, and by the chill of November, I had my creation. I just needed a spark. Soon, a yellow eye blinked at me, and he rose from the table in my lab. No more frightening a beast had I ever seen. A man, but not. A monster for certain, and so I ran from him, locking myself away in my bedchamber. But the restless and I, restlessness I felt would not let me sleep. And here I am running still from my life's creation. Cool. And I do want to explain, like, Frankenstein has a lot going on in it. <laughs> yeah. And so that's basically just up into the creation. There's, the whole story goes, if you haven't read it, goes yeah. well beyond that. You know, Frankenstein's killing everybody. Right. And Victor's running from him the whole novel, basically. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I have not read it. Um, so it was, and that was kind of fun because you can't, that's the thing. Yeah. You, we really kind of get a general idea, but we don't, I, I, I think a lot of people today don't know it. Uh, you haven't read the novel, but it's great. Yeah. It's out in the free domain. Download it now. I'm sure there's some good audiobooks of it as well, um, renditions of it done. And, and apparently holds up quite well also. Uh, I, I'm actually really interested. I'm going to try and see if I can find Kenneth Branagh, the, the famous actor and director. He did a mm -hmm. version of it. And he actually even called it um, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. So he like there's been a, a ton of, you know, spinoffs, of course, for it. But he, he kind of went a little more um, straightforward with it. Robert De Niro's in it. Really? Just just want to throw that one out there. Um, yeah, I was really kind of surprised by that. Yeah, Robert De Niro uh, is is in it. Uh, and Kenneth Branagh, of course, directs it, but also is in it. 
but yeah, it was just it was interesting seeing De Niro. So that's uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's Frank and he's he's the monster too. So that yeah, go go take a look at that. I think it's a '90s film. But um, yeah, so Frankenstein is it, it's incredible because it, from the sources that I looked at, I'm starting at Britannica and Wikipedia, and uh, they they sort of credit it a lot, or they note that a lot of historians essentially credit it with being the first science fiction piece. Basically, um, Brian Aldiss is a famous British writer, and he he says that, and as well as several others, and it kind of makes sense in a way. I mean, I don't have a all the Victorian era novels kind of stuck in my head, and um, but it's it's really interesting, and and I think that that's it. And I I think it's important that it's the science fiction because it, the story is called Frankenstein or the modern Prometheus. It just kind of gets called Frankenstein now. Um, and Prometheus, we actually talked about. I think specifically, we had that as an episode topic. Yeah, it makes sense because Prometheus gave life to humans, and Doctor Frankenstein gives life to the monster. Exactly, and but you know, with Prometheus, um, the Greek being, this is this is not science fiction. It's just fiction. So I think that's kind of the important part here. I think it's not. There's not a science to it. There's a specific science to this. He's collecting the parts. He infuses science, that like galvanism, the practice, the, this this idea, and uh, and and things like that. So now the coming of it uh, of the book was was really funny. And Cami knew this actually. Do you want to explain that real quick? Sorry, how, what? What inspired writing the story? Like how I it, don't know the whole. Or well, I can't remember the whole setup, but it was but Lord yeah. Byron, mm -hmm. uh, Mary. Was it Shelley at the time? I she, feel like she was essentially younger. she she yeah. They weren't married yet, but she was she was pretending to be his wife. Um, and then who whoever Shelley's first name is was there, and then her best friend or Lord Byron's girlfriend. Yeah, something uh, like that. Yeah, and they get caught in like some kind of storm. Right, it's like a lightning storm. I don't, you know, it doesn't say that in my things. I mean, that might've been what it was, but yeah, they were hanging out. Yeah. And they didn't have anything to do. And so they all wrote stories. Yeah. So like what, like, I think it was Byron um, was like, so, you know, a bunch of rich Victorian era people are in, they're, they're touring like Germany, Switzerland. They're just doing, you know, European things, hashtag. And um, they, they just kind of decide one night, like, let's have a competition on who can write a story. And they had been talking about things like galvanism, um, these kind of more, you know, modern uh, science-y things and, and life and, and things like that. And, and it actually, Shelley had recently lost um, one of her, I think her first child. And some people believe that there's a connection to losing that child and then having a story about creating life, although it being a horrid creature that kills things. I don't know if, you know, <laughs> where that's going, but it was wild. And um, Shelley was a really good writer. She wrote several pieces um, throughout her life. And uh, it, it was interesting because they became kind of more famous later Um in a way, I mean, she was well respected uh, in her time, but it kind of like things kind of seemed to have ramped up for her. But um, people, people liked it. Um, she had like three, I think it was three editions before she was completely, uh, or it was the novel that we know it. Um, but in the uh, 70s, there was kind of a resurgence for her other works. Um, I think during like the feminist movement, it really kind of picked up pace because of well, her. Well, did pieces. she win the contest? We never. That's a good point. I don't know. Well, oh, and I, that reminds me. So Lord Byron, oh boy, he's a funny guy. He was a huge like Greco-Roman file. I don't know if you knew this. And during World War One, he died in Turkey trying to help like Greek independence, the Greek independence movement. Um, he, you know, people joke like the British Museum like stole all the stuff and in a way they did, but I, I won't, this isn't for me to kind of argue, but people like Lord Byron kind of spearheaded that movement. And while some people get it for malicious, rich, uh, your monetary gains, he wanted to do these sort of things for preservation. And, and I think that succeeded in a lot of ways. So I'll just leave it at that. But poor By Byron, he like literally wanted to be in the front lines of like recreating a Hellenistic state and he died of like, I, it was some disease. It wasn't even on the battlefield getting shot. It was just like, 
at TV Syphilis. or something. Yeah, pretty much, probably. But um, he was he was a wild guy. He was a really wild guy. But yeah, he was friends with um, it was Percy Shelley. That that was who um Mary. That's his name. Mary married, and he was an interesting guy too. Um, she had a, a an absolutely wild life. Uh, Mary, I'll kind of like talk with her. She so um, she was born in 1797. Um, she lost three kids and her pr husband prematurely. Um, she, she died in 1851. So she outlived all this. Um, her mother died, I think either at her birth or shortly after her birth, her mother and father though, were known, um, uh, philosophers, writers. She was encouraged to write by her father. She wrote a lot, lot like her father had her write lots of letters. So she had a, a, a good education. She was well-written and it clearly shows, uh, through her life. And so, um, yeah, it, it, just with her connection with her husband, she, uh, so yeah, writing Frankenstein, they spending time with Lord Byron in Geneva. They went through Germany too. A lot of the, the, the pretty much everywhere that Frankenstein takes place is basically their travel route. So she was kind of taking in these sites and then using it, um, to write. So I thought that was really interesting too. And, uh, oh, that's, here it is. You're, you actually are right. So, um, this is from Wikipedia. So th this is their explanation. So they were sitting around a log fire at a villa of Byron's and uh, they were telling each other German ghost stories. That's specifically what it was, German ghost stories. And that's sort of what, uh, which has its own um, Phantasmagoriana is, <laughs> is the Wikipedia page if you want to look at that up. So that's what they were talking about was German ghost stories. And I think that it kind of spun out and then kind of came to like, oh, let's write. So but maybe they were saying, like, let's write our own, that kind of thing. And yeah, Shelley definitely did a great job of writing her own. And and I think, I mean, it's telling. She, she like I said, a, kind of a subtitle for it is The Modern Prometheus. So she had some, it, it was a really cool infusion of that idea of Prometheus. I have to look at what the episode was that we did. I'll have to look. It was some great pun. We've I'm done sure. twice, uh, Prometheus twice. We did. That's Pan what I thought. Dora has something to do with Prometheus, and then we yeah. did his. I, I think we did him. That was maybe stealing fire. Yeah, I think so. And too. then there was something else. Yeah, but it, it's it's a it's a human creation story, and I think he pisses off people by doing that, um, <laughs> which kind of happens to. Um, Dr. You know, Frankenstein. What I thought was really interesting from the beginning of the book, um, it starts with like these letters that are being written and to the first narrator's sister. Mm -hmm. And um, he refers to Victor Frankenstein as almost a deceased man, like the way he looks. Yeah. And then they've brought him back to life. So it almost tells the story in that first letter, or well, I think it was like the third letter. He's almost start. She's almost starting to tell the story of Victor Frankenstein, but the mo you know, as yeah, the monster. I don't know. And and it, that's people will um, people who are jerks will uh, correct you and be like, oh, it's you know Frankenstein's monster, and it, that is true. But it, it, it's it's completely like taken over that when you say frankenstein you don't think of oh yes phd you you think <laughs> yes the monster and and that's sort of like kind of by design almost like it it, it almost like it intended uh to happen but either way it, it it just kind of proves the the effect of the monster uh, on the story and and on our lives and how it's spun off i mean it, it's absolutely wild how how it's gone out and but i i think what's really cool too though is it, it's you know if you're thinking of german ghost stories that they would talk about in the gothic uh you know victorian era having a a story that's sort of inspired by that inspired by sort of greek stories but it's also kind of scary it, it, it but but it's grounded in science i that's i think that's really awesome one thing wikipedia talks about and uh is is that she was well liked. Um, Shelley was her works were well reviewed, but they missed a lot of the cre the political undertones. And um, her husband and her father were very political. In fact, that's how she met her her husband. Her husband was a admirer, and and I don't know if she he worked with her father or something like that. He was he was connected to her father, and and she met him. And un unfortunately, side note, Percy was actually married when he met Mary, and his. But but like they had this, they still did a 
their trees together and they didn't marry until Percy's wife, former wife killed herself. And she killed herself at the same time as a cousin or a sister-in-law of Mary did. So it very that is Victorian. Horrible. Yeah. It's, but you're it's, right. It's very Victorian. It's so, so rich Victorian. And yeah, I'm, I'm listening um, to the, the Patrick Allitz on great courses works. He, he did one on Victorian London. And in fact, I, I, I'm trying to, I keep thinking of things from that. And I'm like, Oh, I should say that. Like that's, there's nothing to do with it other than it's Victorian, but it, it's, 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 in, there's a lot, a big thing of, of rich people kind of having nothing to do. Um, but, I think, sh and, and being depressed by it and, and having to overcome that in a way. And people like Byron, you know, went to Turkey to try and So like us in the pandemic, Ellen. but without the money. It's that modern issue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like a first, this is like first world problems of the Victorian era when it was the first world. But I, I just think that despite everything that went on with her and the craziness of, with her husband, and I mean, that, that was, that's absolutely wild. She was able to create these really good works they were they had a lot of depth to them they were kind of like scientifically focused you know they were based on enlightenment and post enlightenment ideas uh, and counter enlightenment too um which i thought was great um realistic practical things um were involved as well but they also had these great overall ideas and these stories and frankenstein itself like i've seen the many retellings that have been told and different episodes of cartoons that I watched as a kid. And we all kind of get the idea. We, we, you end up sympathizing with Frankenstein, the monster in, in most cases, that's kind of the, the idea, but I, I don't know if that is the case of um, her story. Yeah. You, you really do because Victor, all the monster wants is mm -hmm. someone to share his time with. So he wants Victor to create him a companion and Victor, goes to do it at one point and then he mm -hmm. decides against it because he's so scared of the monster that he already created he doesn't create another one but it ends up really being his demise not giving the monster what he wants mm. it's it's a really sad story because he's j all he wants is a friend <laughs> it's right, like literally it but people run away from him much of himself yeah no that's great um I was the the modern Prometheus title was thrown around a lot during this time as well. People like Immanuel Kant um, and Lord Byron. So it 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 seems like and it it sort of um, they would use that as like the idea of like uh, Immanuel Kant apparently called Benjamin Franklin the Prometheus of modern times, so cr the creator of modern times and things like that. So I'm I'm thinking of the modern Prometheus uh, if there's anything kind of beyond what it means other than someone who brings life and what the if, if you create and life so he created life and then also was punished for it exactly so it, it exactly. followed the story pretty well right yeah so i i that's pretty wild i thought that was really interesting so yeah this is a a, a great story lots of adaptations I, I i love kenneth branagh so i'm sure his version is good it's a 1994 film despite robert de niro being in it i just can't I, I don't like I can't. Wait, so Robert even, De Niro is the monster? I'm positive. Hold on, let me look it up real fast. Um Okay, while you're looking it up, have you ever seen the X Files episode, the postmodern Prometheus? No. It's I really, really watch, weird. I didn't really watch um X Files. What what was the premise of that? What was it called that? I am pretty sure that it's the one with um where they they kind of insinuate that Cher is there, but Cher, but it Cher isn't there. Uh, they filmed it in black and white, and it it looks almost like a a comic book. Um, the way the way it's actually filmed. Yeah. Um, it. I want to say that. Yeah, Scully and Mulder are in it. So um, I looked it up here. It's season five, and. There's like just this town where they're creating these creatures that are like human hybrid creatures. Yeah. And it it reminds me a lot of the movie Mask. And that's where like the share mm. references come in. So she's she's singing at the end. It's not really share. Right. That's funny. 
it well, probably did not age well, but it's it. I remember it sure. being a good episode at the time. It was like a monster of the week kind of thing. I, well, I I'd be surprised if this aged well. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I but I, I love Kenneth Branagh so much. He's he's great. So yeah, De Niro is the the creation is what they dub him. Uh, Branagh is Victor Frankenstein. Helena Bonham Carter is uh, I love guess his her. Wife. Yeah, I mean it's it's got a cast of characters oh ian holm is in it he was um bilbo baggins in the original trilogy of the lord of the rings um so it's, it's got an all-star class oh john cleese is in it that's right oh, well, oh I like my him god a lot too. yeah so <laughs> 1994 film this might be worth trying to check out i'll have to see this on netflix that would be uh fun but De and i looked up de niro's the images of de niro it's it's pretty interesting they they go they, he's got like a lots of sewing and stitches like trying to c conform him together no no metal rods sticking out of his neck <laughs> but he uh, it's interesting i i'd be interested to see his performance how he did in this i don't know <laughs> well uh cami thanks for your story bringing that in uh i i think i gotta read or at least watch this film now to really get the most out of my frankenstein uh, Mary Shelley's story uh, and do it like do yourself a favor and read Mary Shelley's biography page somewhere it, it, it's a trip <laughs> it's a trip she went through a lot for sure and I'm, I'm it's it's great that she was able to pump out some good fiction and essentially pioneer science fiction so everyone uh, thanks for tuning in next week we've got another uh, figure we're kind of going back to the Sherlock Holmesian of it with a fun story um so tune in then. If you have any suggestions, let us know. A little uh, spoiler, yeah. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle does show up in that one too. Oh, nice. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, thanks for tuning in and we will see you next time.